everyone. Welcome to the Back 40 Feet, where we talk about suburban, urban, and patio gardening. And today I'm going to talk about sweet potatoes, which are very easy to grow in a small area of your backyard. To grow sweet potatoes, they start from what's called slips. And when you look in the uh, catalogs, they can be very expensive. It's, um, it's about $22 for a batch. And they come sort of looking pretty wilted. I haven't had very good luck in ordering them. So this year I started my own sweet potato slips. To do that, you start with a sweet potato and you can put it in water or dirt. And after about six weeks, it will sprout slips. If you do decide to buy some sweet potatoes from the market, it's really important to get organic sweet potatoes. The reason for this is that non-organic sweet potatoes are treated to prevent sprouting in the store. It provides a longer shelf life, but as a result, you're not going to get any sprouts on that sweet potato that you're trying to get sprouts from. So buy organic if you're going to use it to create more sweet potatoes. Here are my sweet potatoes after six weeks, and I did a little bit of an experiment. These sweet potatoes are all-purpose sweet potatoes from the store and are not organic and you can see that nothing has happened here. There's nothing at all. This sweet potato was one of last year's potatoes and you can see that there are some sprouts, but it definitely didn't create any slips. So even though this was viable, it didn't work. Over here, I have two sweet potatoes that are organic that I just bought at the supermarket. And truthfully, I looked for ones at the supermarket that I probably wouldn't eat because they already started to have little evidence of sprouts. And when you look, this is what's called a slip, coming right off the sweet potato. And what I'm going to do next, so these are two different varieties. This is a red sweet potato and an orange sweet potato. I'm going to break these off and put them into water to help them root before I put them into the ground. To help them sprout, a couple of things I did is I made sure that they had a good amount of sunlight. Uh, these really didn't need to go under my uh, seed starting set. But the other thing I did is this is a propagation mat to provide some bottom heat to help them sprout. And they're dry at the moment because I'm planning to uh, break off the slips. But I put them in soil and I kept them fairly wet uh, through most of their growing season to help them sprout. Here are my sweet potato slips, and you can really see that there's quite a nice root system already established on these, um, on both sets of um, varieties. And just having these in the water for a little bit longer will get some stronger roots uh, while I wait for the temperature to, to go up. Here are my two sweet potatoes after taking most of the slips off. But when you look, this one's a little small, but there's still some tiny ones coming. And same with this one. So I didn't take those off so that those can get a little bigger to uh, root. It's been about a week and a half and I'm checking back on my sweet potatoes. And you can see this one actually created its own root system. So I don't even need to put this in water. But if you look here, you can really see some very well-defined root systems. Um, ideally, these should just go right into the ground. However, in New England, it's still chilly out. Ideally, you could put these in the ground when nighttime temperatures have stabilized to around 60 degrees. Here, we're still down into the 40s at night. So I'm gonna put these into uh, some three to four inch pots so that they can continue to grow until the warm weather. What I did want to show you, if I zoom in, you can see these white spots on one of my sweet potato vines. This is called edema, and it is how sweet potatoes manage when they have too much water. It's a way that they almost like perspire, if you could imagine, so they're water blisters, which is why I'm not going to keep these in a water jar for another few weeks, and why I want to get them back into the soil. Um, this isn't going to damage the plants, but it could make them more susceptible for insects to get in. So I'd really like to get a better water balance for my sweet potato vines. 
If you look at this leaf, you can see that it's got some black spots on it. This leaf looked exactly like these white spots about a week ago, and then when they, the uh, blisters burst, this is how the leaf ended up. So this isn't diseased, but you can imagine that it's not particularly healthy for the leaf to stay like this. So uh, hence why I'm going to be planting my sweet potatoes into pots. Here they are potted up. And once I get some of my season extenders up, I'll put them in there so that they can harden off and be ready for a late spring planting.